So welcome back everyone and uh, hopefully your heads are bursting with grand ideas inspired by our amazing speakers in those full few two days of inspiring speeches. It's time to grab for you another cup of tea, coffee or anything of your choice and sit down in a very comfortable position because we will be having a fireside chat with Mindogas Brujas. Mindogas is a CEO and co-founder at Oxus.ai. He helps sales team to improve performance leveraging speech analytics uh, with AI and Mindugas is obsessed with biohacking so we have plenty of topics to uh, deep dive into uh, but our fireside chat is mainly about how to attract investment because we do feel having something super complex uh, is not an easy thing to actually sell to the investors because investors also need uh, the ideas to be sold to them. But Mindogas, let's start from the beginning, from the base question. Are you afraid of AI? And if not, what the technology actually means to you? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. So yeah, talking about AI, I mean, yeah, definitely not. It's like another opportunity uh, uh, to make uh, uh, human lives and, and world uh, uh, better overall, uh, honestly. Um, and technology, it means, uh, you know, the extension of uh, human capabilities uh, to do more, better, uh, and uh, just I improving the life of the human. Yeah, so that's about technology. Okay, uh, so today you are the CEO and co-founder of Oxus.ai. When you started this company, were you already sure that you will employ AI as a basis of your solution or you came across uh, to it when found some specific challenge that only AI-based solution could solve? Could you share us yeah. a story about how, how did you create Oxus.ai? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, I was really uh, passionate about technologies and especially AI like long time ago. And you know, this AI is kind of buzzword that would help and solve everything and so on. But I was really curious uh, to understand what it's capable about. Uh, and that's why I decided to, to learn uh, code myself. And uh, I, I was doing that more than two years be before uh, we established uh, Oxus AI. And uh, uh, during that period, I, I met a lot of great engineers, um, uh, machine learning engineers and, and, and other um, colleagues of mine right now. Uh, and, and really understanding the, the deep of, of possibilities uh, of, of AI then um, allowed me to, to think about um, um, advantages and and also how to apply it to the like quite great challenges i, I had this habit to um, write down all the kind of problems i face every day so you know after these few years of of studying ai and, and coding all, all these boot camps and so on uh, i pick up all these problems that uh, was not solved and uh, I, I tried to to pick you know the the ones that are most challenging, promising, and and uh, at the same time feasible with the with the solutions of of AI, and that's how uh, we came up with uh, with Oxus AI. Amazing. So you did decide in order to build the solution to get to understand the fully how the technology works yourself, right? You didn't approach some, some specific specialist and say like, you have the skills that my project needs and that's why I would love to work with you. Yeah, exactly. So first of all, I, I tried to, to understand, uh, as I mentioned, uh, like the, the, the details, uh, the, the deep of it, of course, uh, I'm not pretending uh, to be the the best, you know, AI specialist uh, and expert, but it's enough uh, to understand the the basics and have the like uh, quite um, important discussions with uh, uh, with engineers, right? And to be on the same page. Um, yeah. Okay. So since in in this fireside chat, I'm looking at you as a founder that uh, create the company. So could you briefly, to, for everyone to understand, explain? So what does Oxus.ai do? Yeah, so what we do, uh, so we help sales teams um, improve performance leveraging uh, speech analytics. So uh, shortly, 
we are able to listen 100% uh, of the call of the calls of um, sales reps, analyze them, and then give the actionable insights that helps um, uh, that helps uh, people to uh, to do more sales. Right. So yeah. Okay, so at this point you already have uh, the product fully operational. There's a lot of proof that it works. You still, of course, develop for it to have a better accuracy at guessing or selecting or predicting, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, there's like two parts. Uh, one part is uh, one part is uh, uh, technology part. Uh, that allows us to, to do very accurate uh, recognition of the speech, and then another part is you know what we do with this data, um, uh, like building the product that brings the value to the uh, end customer. Um, so we right now uh, testing the product with with first uh, customers, um, and yeah, we are ready to uh, to scale it uh, um, uh, to uh, to other markets. Okay, and then you decided that you need to fundraise because uh, you are a clever uh, founder that does understand like the risk should be distributed among very wise and clever people. So how did you start to package it up? And maybe you can briefly um, uh, give tips and tricks for uh, everyone who is looking. Looking at us, and maybe they don't. They do have the product, the service that it's not fully done, or it cannot actually make today what they expected to make in, uh, in or do in a, in a year. So, how can you start packaging up, and how can you mm -hmm. prepare yourself for the fundraising? Yeah, so, honestly, uh, we started to think about uh, fundraising like very in in beginning, e even before, uh, because I kind of I'm ar around the startup uh, environment qu quite uh, quite a lot of years. So we um, we decided that we want to be in this you know VC, VC business, um, um, not some some boutique business, uh, and. Uh, and yeah, so the the main goal is, um, the main uh, topic is that you you should plan it uh, like very in advance and to to look at strategically, um, have the uh, ideal uh, investor profile, uh, decide uh, uh, would you like uh, and uh, would you would you go you know for VC money or for for angel uh, investors money, and uh, after that you know like. Um, Pick the long list of, of potential investors uh, and and start uh, doing the the sales right um, and uh, this part is, is pretty tricky because in the very beginning nobody is, is listening you uh, right so everyone wants um, you know, some traction show validation like testimonials of, of customers and so on and especially if you are in this technology business. So it's pretty hard because it, it takes time to, to build the, the technology um, behind. Um, but uh, despite that, you, you're doing that in advance. So you, you're approaching the uh, investors uh, pretty in advance, talking with them uh, and uh, uh, pitching them your idea, what gonna be, uh, what milestones you're gonna achieve. Uh, and you and that surprise, surprise, actually achieving them, right? Yeah, and and you uh, like right, and and you put them to your kind of you know I investors uh, newsletter, uh, warming up every month what you achieved, what not, and uh, look after one year we are raising, and uh, these people you already know you, uh, they they saw your uh, kind of you know attraction, your path, um, your uh, delivery capabilities. And it's much easier than uh, uh, to, to raise money. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's not over one uh, night. Uh, definitely. Well, uh, I heard someone saying like uh, you can you can you can plan whatever you want. It will take double of time. Yeah, it's it's about the budget. So if you uh, it's 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 a it's a good quote. Uh, if you take your kind of revenue projections. And your cost projection, so you should, uh, you know, multiple uh, uh, by two uh, the costs and um, reduce the, the the revenue projections by by two uh, as well. So then you come to the you know some kind of uh, reality. Okay, so you just shared first mistake that you did, and you wouldn't repeat it again. Any other things for everyone else to actually note down, and not to experience themselves. Mm, I think first of all, it's important that uh, you should uh, find uh, like real partner. I mean, I, I'm talking about the uh, co-founder. Um, 
which uh, I mean, who could uh, really cover the parts that you are not good at, at, uh, at them, um, and uh, agree with, uh, with with him or, or, or if 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 it case of you uh, on very details uh, what you would do in, in what cases how long you are uh, planning to work in this company um, uh, uh, what you would do if you if you want kind of to to switch or to move to other country and so on. Uh, talk about exits, um, how big you want to go, and this is really important. It's like you know, like a marriage, I would say. Um, uh, so this is one thing, and another thing is you you should uh, set up yourself. Uh, I would say at least for two years uh, with no income, and you should be prepared for that. Um, either it's you know income from from from. Um, uh, from business itself, or is uh, from uh, from uh, investors, um, and you should have enough funds uh, to survive uh, yourself, uh, right, over this period. Uh, if you think that uh, after starting business in in two three months you're gonna start the getting revenue, you, you will be so disappointed because it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, yeah, and it's uh, a good good uh, set is like uh, as I said, like two years, uh, and then you have time to. Iterate, experiment, find the solution, uh, problem, solution fit, and uh, raise money. Yeah, and, and, and move on. Amazing, amazing. Okay, and to wrap it up, so we, we now un understood, so what did you experience? And from your own point of view, it is a very common thing that actually we discussed during the previous panel, that majority of the startups are playing with the word AI, AI, our AI will do this and that, this and that. So uh, after you actually successfully close the funding round, uh, what would be your advice for the younger or maybe more mature founders that are currently fundraising with the AI? What shouldn't be said in the meetings with investors that that that? Um, what so not to mention? Bad word, bad word, bad word. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so probably the easiest way is uh, like really do uh, something with AI and not to pretend something with that because uh, smart what about fake it till you make it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, but it's you know a sh short short way uh, uh, and uh, maybe it works uh, with not smart investors, but uh, probably you won't uh, have smart investors on board, right? So uh, so if you talk with smart investors. Um, they very uh, very fast uh, will uh, detect. I mean, are you doing real uh, stuff or not? And uh, yeah, just be transparent and uh, do not hide. Or do, do not kind of overrate something. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually it's not so difficult uh, if you really do uh, uh, real uh, stuff and you you can show you can. Uh, you know, go in the details with, let's say, they are tech um, advisors uh, who who know the stuff. Um, yeah, and if you if you pretend that you're doing AI and there is like none AI, just you know some average calculations or so, yeah, so you will be busted very fast. So um, okay. better don't do that. So. Okay, amazing. Mindugas, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. And uh, I expect you to continue participating in the next panel where we will be speaking from the investor perspective because I do know that you're yourself, uh, you're an angel investor. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So thank you again for your answers. And there, everyone, let's move on to our next Thank panel you. discussion where we will be discussing can we attract investments for something like AI or bullshit bingo versus real opportunities. Stay tuned.